Hey everybody, it's your boy Doc Williams, and today we're going to be talking about building your own community. If you've been struggling for the last couple of years, months, in creating your community that's profitable, look no further than today's discussion. We're going to be talking about building a paid community that can make you 120k annually, and we have the best person to do this with. We want to introduce Murtaza from uh, Heartbeat. How are we doing, man? Doing well, doing well. Excited to be here. Awesome. 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 So uh, thank you so much for your time. We're going to be diving in. We're going to be talking about it. And you already know on this channel, we talk about heartbeat and it's not just fluff. We're not just saying, you know, we love it and all this stuff. You know why we love it. You see all of the things, the intricacies, why we like this platform. We've been talking about this for over a year now. So we're excited to get started today, man. So um, uh, before we get started, could you tell the good people a little, a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So my background is I have been in this community space since I was a kid. This is like managing RuneScape guilds, then going and, you know, running a bunch of student organizations, running fraternities, running a bunch of professional work. So I've been like pretty actively managing and running communities for the last 10 years. Uh, got my first community to about 115,000 in annual revenue when I was 19. Uh, so we were growing that pretty quickly, then ended up becoming the head of community for one of the second largest startup accelerators in the world. Uh, did that for a little bit. And uh, now I run Harpy, where we're building community tech for everyone. And uh, we've helped uh, a little over 1,500 communities launch. Uh, but what I'm probably the most proud of is we put $2 million back into the pockets of community builders as they're monetizing and building their business through Harpy. So that's a little bit about my background. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, you know, today, and, you know, like we were talking about, I one of the things that stood out with for me when you, when I first discovered Heartbeat, you really got the intricacies and all the things it takes to be a great community manager, community operations manager. And it shows in the product. It shows all that thinking and all of the things that you've experienced. And it helps ones that are running a community or ones that are building a community uh, as a business of RuneScape. So tell me a little bit about this. So, <laughs> so how did this start? Wait, I, I Was this on GeoCities? Where was this? I got, I got to hear about this. What happened? Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, I, I always jokingly say, like, look, I, I grew up as a, a Muslim kid in Georgia after 9-11. So we're just going to call a spade a spade, man. Like, growing up, all of my friends were, were online. Uh, and so, like, RuneScape was just, like, the, the online gaming world. We would jump in. Uh, and, like, I remember racing home after school. There was, like, these groups and guilds that I would run. We'd kind of, like, do raids and things like that together. Uh, it was a good time. Uh, but that was, like, my first real community where it was, like, these are the friends that I, like, love hanging out with that I love spending time with. And, you know, when you're, when you're growing up, you don't really call it a community. Your parents are just, like, oh, you're spending too much time on your laptop. But it's, it's funny that like a lot of those same things have continued to pop up over and over and over as we're helping people build like paid communities and profitable communities and things like that. Uh, so I always uh, lovingly say that RuneScape was, was my first community and like that's where I got a lot of my shops. I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love to hear the background. So, okay. So what we're going to be talking about today and in the chat, let us know. We have a couple questions that people have been asking. And by the way, to check out Heartbeat, there's a link down below. Check it out. Um, and you know, Paul was asking right here, Hey, can you explain the hundred K community? How, how, what it's all about all those things? We got you. We got you, Paul. We're going to be talking about this. Um, so, you know, let us know where you want to begin, man. Um, we can kind of dive into it, talk about the subject, or if you want to share slides, wherever you would like, we will begin my friend. Let's do it. Yeah. So I got some slides pulled up. Let me go ahead and share my screen. So I'm going to share that right now. And then let me move this to the second screen. Um, and as I'm going through this, y'all, uh, feel free to just uh, pop in more questions into the chat. Like, uh, we'll both keep an eye on that. And I love doing this to be a little bit more interactive. Uh, it's, it's fun when you guys break up things with questions. It's less fun when it's just like another Zoom lecture. Um, so please, please, please drop them in and, and I'm happy to answer them. So we talked a little bit about kind of my background, getting communities started, building paid communities. I talked about my first community that I got to 115K in annual revenue. About 70% of that was membership fees, 30% of that were sponsorship fees. Uh, then ran a community for Georgia Tech Startup Accelerator, and then a lot of the work that I've done with Heartbeat. And so really what I want to talk about today is how you can actually build a community business that makes you $120,000 a year. That's it. It's that simple. But we're going to talk about all the basics. So how do you actually do this? How do you start from scratch? 
why building a paid community has become so profitable today. Like this wasn't something that was easy to do 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but it's gotten significantly easier to do today. Now it's not easy, it's just easier. Uh, and so we're going to talk about a lot of the steps that you can take to build a really lasting community business by doing this, uh, how you can craft a really powerful offering, build your community, get your first customers, iterate over and over to get this really, really fine tune, and then scale up to that 120K ARR mark. And so as we're going through this, just drop any questions that you got into the chat and uh, we'll make sure to knock them out. So kind of the first things that I want to just like make sure we talk about, right, is I, I, like I said, this this is easier. It is not easy. Uh, and so there's not really like a get rich quick scheme or anything like that here. Like community building is going to take time and work and intentionality. But you don't need to have a massive audience or an email list to come in and do this. Like you can come in. We've seen people come in with five people that they started off their community with. And then like a year later, they're at like 200K in revenue. So there's so much that you can do with so little. So I wouldn't worry about kind of where you're starting off. My expectation is that, you know, even if you're starting off from scratch within 12 months, you should be able to build a pretty lasting business by doing this. Um, and then, like I said, just ask lots of questions and that's what will make all of this stuff fun. So why this has become so profitable is like, if you think about where the internet has gone is there's kind of like two ways to sell like our expertise, right? If we know how to do a thing really well, say we're a really good chef, say we're a really good like knitting uh, teacher, uh, say we want to teach people how to play guitar. Um, if you want to like teach your expertise on the internet, there's pretty much two ways that you can do that right now. You can either like do one-on-one -on -one coaching, which means you go on Calendly, you'll make a paid Calendly page and you have people, you know, pay and book time with you. Uh, and what that means is that you have to keep either getting the same people to rebook time over and over and over again. You're limited by the amount of hours that you have in a day. Uh, and you're constantly trying to find new customers to book those same hours, but you're always going to cap out at revenue. Uh, there is, you know, like I said, only 24 hours in a day. And so at the end of the year, like you can only really make so much money. Um, and the folks that are building businesses, like what I recognize is like, I'm building a business too. Like we want more, uh, we build the thing and then we want to keep building more and more of the thing. And we want to impact and influence more people in a positive way. So with coaching, you cap out on your revenue and your impact. Uh, and then the second way is you can do it through courses. But what that means is either you're like selling the same course to a bunch of new people and you're constantly marketing, or you're making a course, you sell it to some folks and you have to make a new course and a new course and a new course. And you're just constantly on this content hamster wheel. And so the end result of a lot of this is if you're trying to like teach your expertise on the internet, if you're trying to build spaces for people, it's actually pretty hard not to burn out. Like this stuff is really, really, really difficult and time consuming. And so if you're constantly on these hamster wheels of trying to do all this stuff, uh, it's going to be difficult. And so the solution here is to build products and build a community where you're charging monthly or charging subscription revenue and you're making monthly recurring revenue instead. And that monthly recurring revenue is why, you know, if you look at like all the tech SaaS businesses and things like that, it's why they're so much easier to stay, scale because that recurring revenue means stability. It means like I can tell how much money I'm going to make in the month of November about how much I'm going to make in December and January and February. And then I can plan for that. I can hire on some VAs, I can hire on a team, and I can kind of work together with a group of folks and, you know, get my vision built out. And so what we're going to talk about a little bit more today is like, how do you transition the ideas and the products and the memberships that you're kind of thinking of in your head away from one-off purchases and into like a subscription revenue offering. So let me pause right there because I want to double check. Doc, are we uh, missing anything in the chat before I keep going? No. So there's yes and no. <laughs> right now, we have a couple different streams going on. We don't have all of the chat from uh, Twitter and uh, YouTube, but I am getting a message right here. Someone's saying that actually, okay, Bill. Bill is talking about they are in the... Oh, this is interesting. Sorry about this. Okay. So they are an electrician <laughs> for the last 15 years. They're thinking about transitioning to do something to teach other electricians, but they don't see this in their industry. Do they still think that it could work? That's interesting. So more of like, yeah, more blue collar and they're trying yeah. to transition online. Um, they don't see anyone doing that in their space. Should they even try it? That's interesting. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, the, the honest thing, um, and this was from Bill, right? Yeah, uh, Bill. Yeah, Bill. Like the thing that I've been surprised about is just the types of communities that get built. Like when we started Heartbeat, like I really kind of expected this to be more of like a techie thing. It would be in a lot of like the nerd circles and that was going to be it. Um, and I have been genuinely surprised at the types of folks that have built communities on Heartbeat. Uh, we've had groups of like brain damage survivors that have built like paid communities to like help support folks that are, you know, dealing with a lot of those like physical ailments. 
Uh, we've seen communities of just like, you know, women over 50 that, you know, want to figure out how to build community and build relationships and friendships uh, back up again. Uh, there's actually this this one's more relevant to you. Uh, there's a, a hardware store on Heartbeat. <laughs> and they actually this is the funniest thing to me It's like it's a physical goods like they've got a physical location. You can go visit them. Uh, and they've got a DIY community that just like makes it easy for people to come in, ask questions, say, hey, I'm remodeling my kitchen. I'm trying to do this. Like, how do I do that? Uh, and so like, I've been pretty surprised. Like I didn't expect any hardware stores to like start using Heartbeat and like use it as a pretty strong growth lever for their business. So my take would be to like try it and test it. And the easy way to like test that is see if these folks, like the, the people that are learning to be electricians want to come together on calls and just like learn from each other doing that maybe like once a month. And so I would just test it out by saying, hey, maybe like once a month, let's do a Zoom call. Let's bring some people together and then we can just share best practices, tips, tricks, things like that. Uh, and if you get people on that Zoom call and you get people really excited and amped up about it, then that's a pretty easy indicator that like, hey, these folks are also going to gel well in an actual digital community. Um, and so I would just like kind of test the boundaries a little bit until you get to the point where you're like, yeah, I'm pretty confident that I could drop all these people into a community and they'd be happy. And just from my experience, like nothing that you're saying about the electricians, like it is surprising to me in the sense that like, I would expect that this is like a community that you can start and get like a lot of activity around just because like everybody is trying to get better at their craft, at their trade. Right. And community has been like a, a way that we've done this for, for centuries. Um, like even we think about trade unions and things like that. We think about guilds from like the, the early 1700s, 1800s, things like that. Like these were all built communities that were built around professions. So I, I don't think it's like a new thing at all. Like even one of the funnier things that we had is we, we hired an ads agency. Uh, we were working with them and they did the same thing. They were like, you know, we get a lot of like marketers asking us how we run our own ads. And then they just built their own community and paid course and things like that started selling that too. Uh, and so they, and the funny thing is, is like they started making money and growing their revenue even faster than we were because they knew all of the ads work. They knew how to get people in the door. And so like, I think like six months into doing this, they had like doubled our revenue. Um, so it's, it's definitely a doable thing. I love it. I love it. Uh, I got two more coming up yeah. and this is actually a really good. So Jennifer is talking about that. She is in oh. Ikea hacks. It's a subreddit group. Mm -hmm. um, she sees that there's a lot of members, but she's looking for inspiration how she could basically build her own paid community. So she's, yeah. I think what she's um, asking is this already exists, but it's in a free format. How yeah. could she actually do this in a paid format and people going there? Yeah, I would think about going premium. Like that's that's the most immediate thing that I'm thinking about is like, what does the premium version of the IKEA hacks community look like? Uh, like that's that's a subreddit that I'm not in specifically, but like let me let me give it like a close example of a subreddit that I am pretty active on, uh, like amateur room design. Uh, so like I I have a lot of fun designing rooms, designing like my apartment stuff like that. Spending way too much on on Prime Day and like now Black Friday, my wallet's gonna be empty. Uh, but the the free version of that is people just taking pictures of their apartments, of their rooms, of their houses, posting it, and you know people comment back and forth in the comment sections, and that's it, right? The more premium version would be, hey, how do we do this more personally for you, more design? Like, how do we help you design a style guide? How do we help you figure out what your flavor is, what you care about, what's important to you, and then put together a room around that, and then you get feedback on that room, and then you can go and buy all the stuff and then actually put it together and create sort of your dream room or your dream kind of like place. And that's like what a more premium version of this looks like. And so one of the one of the best um, like ways of framing this comes from uh, another community expert, Tatiana Figueredo. Uh, what she talks about is this idea of running a like limited time test uh, to see if you, you, you can build a community or even like a premium experience around something that already exists. And so if we think about kind of this like, uh, you know, room design uh, example that I gave you, the premium test around that would be, hey, we're going to do for four weeks, we're going to do like a live course together. And we're going to walk through the process of like creating your room, what goes into it from a design perspective, what are the basic tools that you want to use to do that. And you can even make it really simple. You can just do like a Miro board or, you know, like a Figma board and kind of move around blocks and things like that. But how do we make it as simple as an approach, approachable as possible, and then give you the skills so that you can go design, you know, you did your bedroom now, how do you do your living room? How do you do your basement? How do you do that? Uh, and then four week course, see if people like it, 
And if you have people going through it, connecting, building relationships, then think about how can we expand that into like a monthly membership of like maybe 30 bucks a month uh, where you can come in and just get help and get feedback from other folks. So that's kind of the way that I would think about it is just like, what does the premium experience look like? What is the most immediate short-term test of this that we can do? Let's get some folks into that test. Because once it's premium and once it's a limited time test, it immediately makes the, the product feel a lot more valuable and you've already got the right folks in there uh, since you, you're already like talking to other folks in the IKEA subreddit. Um, and then, you know, see if that test uh, it lends itself to like a community offering. And by the end of that test, it'll be pretty obvious whether or not like it's going to be a good community offering. Love it. Love it. So I, it, to, from what I'm listening to it, it's, it's almost like a minimal viable community. Correct. Seeing if you hit all those things and then if it's good, uh, keep going from there. I love it. I love it. Um, also to uh, Keto, I think I'm saying it uh, correctly. Thank you so much for being here. Greetings and thank you. Let us know if you're trying to do this in the music space as well. Um, Sprint workshop. She's saying Yahoo Groups back in the day. Good vibes. OK, good vibes. Right there. <laughs> um, so this is great. Yeah. Great questions, everyone. Keep them coming. This is great, man. Awesome. And yeah, keep them coming as, as we keep going through this. So what I want to talk about a little bit is making that transition to, to MRR. So a lot of what paid communities are built around is like, hey, the community leader has expertise or just a lot of interest in a specific space uh, and then wants to create like, you know, a community around that. You know, like I mentioned some examples, cooking, knitting, uh, you know, room design, interior design, like hardware, DIY, things like that. But it's something that you have an interest in or you have some expertise in and you want to shift to like building a community around that. So what a lot of that looks like is instead of working with people one on one and helping them one on one, you're going to shift to more group coaching. These are group office hours. These are like live once a month sessions where, you know, it's kind of like an ask me anything. People can come in, get their questions answered, get help. Uh, the second thing that you're going to be doing is turning a lot of the, the one off questions that you get that come in through an email, through a direct message uh, that are randomly posted uh, in your community. And the ones that you see coming up over and over and over again, start turning that into like a video and a document library for your members. Uh, so that way, when they come in, they actually have some content that they can go through uh, and they have stuff that's there. And for you as the actual creator, it makes it a lot easier for you because you don't have to do all the work to think like, what do I need to make a video about today? Like, what do I need to like put things together around today? You're already getting the questions from your members. Uh, and then the last thing is like, start thinking about like, should you even be putting in like courses and things like that? Can you build this into your onboarding where everybody kind of goes through the same onboarding experience and maybe like a two, three stage course, maybe there's like a live cohort based course, kind of like we talked about with the, the room design example, but like, what are the group experiences and the group learning experiences that you can kind of bring people through? Uh, and you know, if you have clients that you're doing this with, or if you have people that you know, you've done a little bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching with, then you can just kind of work through them and start charging. If you don't, and we're going to talk about that in a second, uh, then what we're going to do is get some clients in or get some people that are interested. And these price points will still stick for like those kind of folks. So like, this is kind of what I see for hobbyist communities is it usually hovers between like 25 a month and 50 bucks a month. And then for more like business oriented communities, we talk about like sales communities, marketing communities, like uh, design communities that'll usually be between like 50 bucks and hundred bucks a month. Um, that being said, these are like guidelines and you can just start here. Like it's an easy way to just like pop a number on a screen and make sure that you're not going to freak anyone out. Uh, but we've seen communities charge way more than this. Like we've seen communities charge 300 a month, 500 a month. The most we've seen on Heartbeat so far is like a community charging 2000 a month. Uh, and they're actually doing like incredibly well. They're growing like surprisingly fast. Um, so the sky's really the limit. Like the, the thing that you just have to keep thinking about is like, what is the value that you're delivering in people's lives? Like, how are you making their lives richer, better, and, and more connected? Uh, because the more that you keep doing that, the, the higher you can actually charge. So, uh, oh, the last Wait. thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, no, no, go ahead. This is, I had to say this before you go on. Um, for people, I love this slide. Please take a moment to screenshot it, do something, um, because this really allows you to have almost like those rails to think about if you're going to validate all of those things. I love having just guidelines, uh, uh, Murtaza, because like you said, so many people I keep hearing about, like, how much should I charge? All these things. Some people just want to see this just to, to make sure that they're in the right ballpark or giving themselves confidence. I love the screenshot this, do whatever you need to right now. That's all. Sorry about that. No, no, no. I'm glad, I'm glad you highlighted it. Um, and, and the funny thing is, is like even the, the way that I even coach people on pricing right now is I kind of talk to them and I'm like, hey, these are really good guidelines to start off with. 
Uh, and then what you want to move towards is funny enough, the, the tutorial that you gave in the hearth uh, back in the summer is really like, how much do you need to make every year to like hit your expenses, feel good, be able to go to the movies on weekends, put money into savings, uh, and then just divide back. Uh, of okay, if I've got, you know, I need to make 120,000 a year, uh, how many people is that per month? And what do I need to be charging them per month? Well, realistically, maybe I can have about 100 people per month. And so like, now I'm going to charge them, you know, like what? Uh, can't remember the exact price. I think it's 100 a month too. Uh, so if you have 100 times 100 uh, times 12, that's 120. Um, so just being able to like kind of work back and understand like what do the numbers look like? Because, you know, if I tell you, you have to just go and make a community that now makes you a six figure salary, that's kind of a scary thing. But if I tell you like, hey, you just need 100 customers and you need them to pay you 100 bucks a month. And you're at zero customers today, but you can get to 100 in a year. Like that's a customer every three days. Uh, and, you know, you'll start speeding up as you get better and better at this. Um, so that's kind of the way that I think about the shift of pricing is start using like these guidelines that I've got given you up here and then kind of work your way towards what you need to like, uh, you know, maintain your lifestyle or even just have the lifestyle that you're looking for. I love it. Um, as you're going on, just real quick. Uh, Kito is saying, yes, I'm interested in doing this in the music space and music education space. Thank you so much for this. Okay. No problem. No problem. I love it. I love it. Yeah. There's, there's a couple music communities that I've seen on heartbeat too. And it's just like, I, I feel like a lot of these, like, uh, I don't love the, the term, like the hobbyist is, is kind of the right term for it. But a lot of these things where it's like, it's, it's not, you know, everybody's like main job. It's not like a sales community. It's not like a marketing community where it's like, uh, immediately, you know, career relevant, but like, I love these hobbyist communities because like that's the thing that is actually pretty tough to find in person like if i just wanted to go find a group of people in person that can help me learn about like music production and music education it would be pretty tough for me to do that like i would maybe like scour some local colleges and try and find some classes i would try and like go online and find some meetup groups and things like that but like finding those people digitally is actually way easier than finding them irl um, and like the funny thing is like, I grew up in Atlanta, like Atlanta is a huge music capital. And like, I actually would probably still struggle to find the right people to like hang out with and like learn that from. So like, I think especially when you're teaching a lot of these pieces that are really like folks is like the, the spice of their life, it, it lends itself so well to community because it's so hard to find in person. Um, and so that's why like, I think like music communities, knitting communities, like craft communities, things like that tend to do really, really well because it's just so hard to find. So moving forward, the second thing that I would think about is really like, how do you craft this really amazing uh, offering for the new members that are coming in, right? Let's say you don't have any clients. Let's say you're starting off from scratch. Uh, and let's use this IKEA uh, community again as an example. Uh, like if we're thinking about like IKEA hacks, what is the dream outcome with that, right? Like what does it look like to be in the top 1% of doing that? Like how does that meaningfully impact your life? How does that help you? How does that change things for you? Uh, and what can you teach people to help them get help get them into the top 1%? And that top 1% sounds like a scary number. It's actually easier than you think. Uh, if you just focus on something, like you will actually jump to the top 1% a lot faster than the people that are doing it passively. Um, so I would think like, what does a dream outcome look like? Um, and you know, what, you know, how likely is your customer to actually achieve that? If they put in the hours, if they put in the time, if they put in the work, they're active in the community, they're coming to the events, they're coming to the office hours, they're coming to the, you know, the, the expert calls and things like that. What is their likelihood of achieving that? What is their likelihood of achieving that when they do it with you in your community versus without you? Right. And so uh, a really easy example for this is like fitness communities, like fitness communities have a really strong value prop in doing this because they can basically say like, hey, look, we have all these plans and we have all these guides that can help you reach your fitness goals. And if you do all the work and you work with us, there's like a 90 percent chance that you're going to hit the goal that you want. But if we just look at the average rate of people that are setting fitness goals and trying to reach them, it's like easily less than 10, 20 percent that are actually reaching them. And so even just by showing your customers like, hey, this is the delta between if you work with me versus if you just try to do this on your own. And if you work with me, it's not going to be easy. I'm going to make you put in the hours and the time, but you're going to have a guide that helps you do this and actually like brings you through this uh, really nicely. So that's the way that I would kind of think about it is like, how do you craft this in a way that makes it feel like it's irresistible? Uh, it's a really, really high amount of value prop. It is going to be work, but your likelihood of success is really high. Let them know how long it takes and let them know how much time it'll take. So if we go back to this fitness community example, what we can say is like, hey, your dream outcome is, uh, you know, you're going to be excited to take your shirt off on the beach. 
Uh, how likely is it that your customer actually achieves that? Well, if you go through all the steps in the plans, there's like a 90% chance. Without doing that, just try to do it on your own with Google plans and you know looking at the average numbers, there's like a 15, 20% chance. How long does it take? It's gonna take you six months. It's gonna take you 12 months. And how much time is it gonna take? It's gonna take you uh, five hours a week, 10 hours a week to do this, right? And that's the commitment that you're signing up for, but that's also what makes this very real, right? Like when you're selling this to potential customers and things like that, you can line it out and say like, hey, this is everything that I'm giving you. It's gonna be in a paid membership and a paid community. And this is the things that I'm expecting from you. And this is the things that you can expect from me. And now you can put all of that together, put a nice price point on it. And it feels so real and so genuine as people are coming in and buying it. That is wonderful. So if I'm understanding this correctly, it's almost uh, building out a scenario where you're just saying, here is where you are. This is where you're going to be. And here are the results. So it's giving them a finite, it's, it's telling us, how to get from the prison to outside and it's yeah. giving them the length of time for them to imagine what's going to happen so they can buy into however long the community or how long the cohort is when you're doing that is that correct correct yeah like i i used to do this for fundraising and so like i have this uh guide uh online and uh, if you just tweet me i'll shoot it over to you uh but i used to teach fundraising to founders pretty often uh and so like for this what i would tell people is hey if you fundraise if, if you go through all the steps that i'm giving you if you watch all the videos and the documents and the content it's going to take quite a few hours there's like eight hours of content just baked into here but if you go through all of this and you do all the steps and you do all the work your fundraise is going to take you three months if you don't do it with me, the average fundraise will take you eight months, right? Like, so that's the Delta three months versus eight months. The other difference here is you will also raise more money, probably double as much money at a better valuation. If you do it with me and if you like learn how to actually fundraise versus if you try to do it on your own. Right. And that's it. Like that was the whole value prop, but that like, you know, two minute kind of spiel is easy enough to like get people to pay $500, $1,000, $1,500 to be able to go through a program because it's so clear what they're getting and what they're not getting and like where I'm helping them. I love it. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have yeah. more. I have one more question from the chat. Please. Yeah. Um, but should I um, wait? Okay. No, no, no. Let's, uh, let's dive in. Yeah. Okay. So um, Urban Nerd saying my fraternity chapter needs a member portal but I would like to offer to other chapters and organizations. So it would need to be a multi-tenant. Uh, tenant. Yeah. What would you suggest for pricing? Yeah, that's a good question. So so is the idea to, to build it on your own, Urban Nerds? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. That's a good question. You're talking about the portal itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the portal itself. Yeah. And, and as he's answering, if I'm understanding this correctly too, he could easily do this on heartbeat if he wanted to having the different ones being able to have that as a member of portal and yeah. then have it in different channels or something like that yeah if he's gonna break it down into different chapters so yes he's saying yes got he's it got it mm -hmm. i so so here's what i would recommend honestly is i would use an existing solution right like you know i'm here so i'm going to recommend heartbeat as like the end all be all solution but even if you go with like other tools and things like that I would do it there because what I've actually learned is like building any kind of real time chat product means your entire job is managing and running real time chat. Like you're managing that across different like iOS devices, across every new Android device, every new Android version, every new iOS version, uh, web, you got to manage it for crappy Wi Fi's, like all these different things that you have to like kind of keep in mind. And so like, the thing that I would actually stay away from is like, don't do anything with the real time chat because it's going to be a huge time suck. Where you can actually provide a lot of leverage is all of the community actions surrounding just the real-time chat. So for example, if you've got a fraternity and one of the things that you want to do is like, um, you know, uh, connect people in groups of five every week to kind of share through goals and like have accountability partners, then I would build the, the tech and the software around doing that. And then maybe auto create like a chat room for them, make a channel and heartbeat for them. And then they're in the channel and then they can talk back and forth there. And like, that's where I would invest my time is what is the automation that makes a lot of the community management pieces of this easier rather than trying to like build from scratch a lot of stuff from the ground up. So that's kind of like how I would think about it. Um, I think a lot of like just general messaging tools will allow you to create multiple group chats and things like that programmatically. Heartbeat obviously has an API and like helps you do that pretty easily. There's like a Zapier integration too that'll help you do that. Um, 
Uh, but that's kind of how I would actually approach that problem is I, I would build the tech around the community facilitation and the community management pieces because that is what is lacking and hard to find. And that is also like the problems that have not been like fully solved yet. Whereas like real time chat is a problem that was like solved 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Uh, mm -hmm. Along with that, I mean, this is not a plug. It kind of is. But the reason I talk about Heartbeat is there's so many types. If you're going to try to Frankenstein it together, and we've done this with Outseta, Member Staff, like, you know my channel. If you've been, take a look. We talk about all these different tech tools. The reason I like Heartbeat is that it makes sense with the onboarding with different members in the progression. The second thing is when you're thinking about paying and how much that would be, um, I would kind of go back to kind of what Ortaza was saying earlier in the in the discussion how much is it worth to the members? Like, what are you doing for the other chapters? If they use your solution and they're on your platform or your community, how much time and effort are you saving them? So you can quantify how much you're saving them so they understand how much they should be paying you. Um, and then also to scalability, if they're working with you and have other cha chapters, kind of um, uh, what does that do for customer support in the community where they can talk to other chapters? How much is that worth? So all of those different things will allow you to kind of make sense of how much you can start presenting that price to them. And I would say if I'm getting one chapter or one to two to five at a time, I might lock in whoever comes first, they get a locked in price and then you go up in price every time you're, you're expanding. Um, I'm also seeing he's asking, can, um, heartbeat be white labeled? I believe so. Is it on all tiers or just one, one tier? I don't know. Yeah. Great question. So, so we're like almost fully white labeled on like the web and, and desktop. So like the web version, like going to the website you can fully custom domain it, white label it. People don't need to know it's heartbeat. Uh, and then the only thing is like the mobile apps are still heartbeat mobile apps on your phone. Uh, and that's just like, it, it takes a lot of time and energy to build super white labeled mobile apps, but that's more of like a question of like when, not if, uh, so it'll be out. Uh, probably my guess is like in the next like year or two, we should have that like fully out and ready. We have like a lot of enterprise customers asking for it. Um, yeah, and, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that you also responded to the, the thing that Doc said, because uh, having run a fraternity, I think Doc is like spot on with exactly what he's saying. Um, and even like my uh, experience running a fraternity chapter is that you th there's a couple problems that like always need to be solved, like turnover between members because you have people coming in and leaving at these spots. So like having centralized content and then creating a very predictable experience for the members of like every year that they come in, there's a baseline good experience that they're going to have and enjoy uh, and creating the tooling and the tech to like facilitate that and enable that. And like that is easily something that you can charge a lot of these like fraternity chapters and fraternity presidents for because it's a problem that they're constantly running into. Awesome. Um, and so, yeah, as we're as we're diving in a little bit more, is there any other questions to touch on before we go deeper into like kind of crafting this this offer? No, I think everything's good. A lot of people, I think they're just excited. Um, and the other thing that I'm seeing is I see one example. Hold on one second. Just making sure I, I see a lot of questions on the structure of pricing more, but I think that will help once they see more concrete steps later on. So I think we're on track. Let's keep awesome. going. Let's do it. So, so yeah, the, we, we talked a little bit about the offer and, and my favorite like phrasing for like how to make an offer is from Alex Hermosi, uh, which he actually writes, he wrote a book about this of like how to make offers so good that people feel stupid saying no. And like, that is the mentality that you have in your head is like, how do you make this feel so great and so juicy that you are missing out by not taking this, that you would, you would regret it instantly the next day, the next hour, if you didn't say yes to this. And that's what you want to think about. And if you're really like dissecting what that means, it's just how do you pack as much value into an offer for your customers that you can deliver for them? And how do you get as creative as possible about thinking about that? And that's just doing right by your customers. So that's kind of the way that, that you should be thinking about this is like, what does it look like to pack all of this in? And so this is kind of an example offer of like, you know, I can teach you how to build a profitable community that makes over 120K a year. On average, only 15% of communities reach this goal, but 85% of the clients that I work with do this. And what I need from you is 10 hours a week for the next three months, right? So like, this is an easy way. We talked about the fundraising example. We talked about the IKEA hacks example. This is like an easy way to, to think about the, the phrasing and the wording here. 
So yeah, what I want to do is I want to pause right here, right? Because we've gotten a lot of excitement in, in the Zoom chat. So take a moment and just jot down in the Zoom chat, like what does a dream uh, outcome look like? Oh, sorry, this is a StreamYard chat. I've been on way too many Zoom calls. Uh, <laughs> drop into the StreamYard chat. What does a dream outcome look like for you and your members? Uh, I'd love to see kind of like how you guys are thinking about this. What great offers look like in your minds? I'm doing that. I'm letting them know. Listen, you're not. We're not watching replay. This is live, so you, you're watching it right now. Hey, unless you're watching on replay, don't forget do hashtag replay. But if you're here live, let us know in the chat. And remember, this is great because this helps you visualize, have goals, and all those things. So this is safe place. If you're watching on Twitter, you know it's still safe where we're at, and also in YouTube right now. Let us know what what the ideal customer would be for you, and we'll we'll definitely look at it and everything like that. This is great. Awesome. Yeah. And the thing that I always say is don't, don't even uh, don't even worry about people trying to steal your ideas because <laughs> after a certain point, it's just all execution. <laughs> like I've been shouting heartbeats like core theses and like our architecture design decisions and all of that from the rooftops from day one. And I have a total of zero people that have copied my stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah. We got uh, Sabrina saying passive income and a self-sustaining community. Uh -huh. I know Sabrina's workshop, this has to do with more crafting. So a crafting channel. Yeah. Um, so deal, dealing with, I think, more um, selling maybe templates or selling different packs for people to build things. Love it. Um, so that's interesting. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, and Sabrina, what I want you to also think about is a little bit more of like, what does that look like for your dream customer? Right. Like when they when they go through your uh, your membership and they go through like Sabrina's workshop. Right. Like what is the dream outcome for them? What does the like end all be all experience look like if every single thing goes right? Like how does it change their life? How does it change their level of happiness? Like where do they land? So that's kind of what I want you guys to think about as you guys think about crafting these offers for your your ideal customer. So uh, going into the, the next piece of this, let's talk about like actually building out the community, right? Because all of what we did so far was figuring out what are the pieces that we need to gather? What is the information that we need before we actually build a community? And I kind of liken it to just, it's lacing up your shoes before you go out for a run. Um, so now let's talk about actually building the, the community itself. Um, I, and I always like to call this out of just like, let's, let's call the spade a spade. Community has become this very fluffy word. Uh, it, it contains a lot and it has a lot baked into it, but that also makes it difficult to understand for, uh, the people that you are selling like your community memberships to. Uh, so by itself, just selling the community outright and saying, Hey, come join my paid community. It's going to cost 20 bucks a month. That's actually pretty difficult. Instead, what you want to do is you want to sell the individual experiences that make up the community. So here's kind of what I mean by that is say we have like an online writing community. And so the whole idea is you're going to grow your business with online writing that reliably go, go, goes uh, viral. So what that community is going to have is four times a year, there's going to be a live course with other people. And it's going to talk about like the best aspects of what it looks like to build a, an online following. Uh, there's going to be a channel where anytime you write something, you can post it. You can get almost instant feedback from a bunch of other folks in the community. And then every month they bring in an expert from, you know, another prolific online writer who's going to do a one hour, ask me anything. Right. And so if you charge 500 bucks a quarter, uh, then you're going to get 60 customers and that's going to get you 120 K a year, right? Like this is the entire business str uh, strategy and the entire plan. But then that means when you go out and sell this to customers, you can tell them like, hey, I've got an online writing community. But what that means is we've got courses every quarter that'll help you level up your writing. Uh, there's a channel where you can post and get some instant feedback. And then we bring in experts that you can talk to and get advice from. And all of a sudden, like that starts to feel a lot more valuable. That starts to feel like, yeah, 500 bucks a quarter. Like I can swing that because this is going to make such a big, meaningful impact in my business. Right. So we want to break it down into the experiences that are going to give you this goal, this dream outcome that, you know, you as a customer are coming in looking for. Another example is, let's say, a cooking community. Uh, so the goal here is for all new members that come in, uh, they should be able to build their own kitchen confidence and cook these healthy meals, regardless of how busy their schedule gets. And you can charge 30 bucks a month for this. 
And the experience here is you tell people that, hey, uh, there's going to be four videos every month, every week. I'm going to make a video and post it about some different recipe or some different cooking practice that's going to be helpful for you. And then at the end of each week, I'm going to do some office hours where we can talk about what was working, what was not working. And then we're also going to have some channels that are just going to be full of healthy, quick, great tasting recipes. So if you're struggling on a weeknight, you can just scroll through, pick something and go through and, and, and grab it. Right. And now it's 30 bucks a month. That feels pretty palatable of like, you know, I want to be confident in my own kitchen. I want to feel good about the food that I'm cooking for 30 bucks a month. A lot of people are willing to pay that. And uh, you need 333 customers to be able to go and make this 120K a year, right? And so again, we're breaking it down into the actual experiences that you're going to see as you're going into the community. Uh, and that's the best way that we can sell it and show that, hey, you will actually hit this dream outcome that we've lined up over here. Awesome. So let's let's pause, right? We've gone through some of these examples. Let's think about the customers, the folks that you want to serve. What is two experiences, two group activities, two things that can happen in your community that are going to help them reach the dream goal uh, that they need to? I love it. Uh, as we're doing this real quick, do you mind if I can share uh, Keto's um, yeah, uh, statement? She um, mentioned uh, music education, a space for people to access their inner voice and utilize music theory. That's nice. I like that. And, and keto, what I would even think about is going one step further, right? Like what happens when you do access your inner voice? Like, how does that make you feel? How does that change you as a person? How does that grow you as a person, right? Like maybe it is just like, we want you to become a confident musician. We want you to become uh, someone that can compose music without ever worrying if they're doing the right thing, right? Like think about like also a lot of the, the human pieces of that. And then if we think about what it means to utilize music theory, um, my guess is, is that I, and I don't know anything about like music theory. So we're just going to we're going to make sure that that is in the byline. Um, my guess is, is that utilizing music theory also makes it that you feel a lot more comfortable experimenting, trying new things and seeing what works together. And like that's also like another cell of right you know, we want to help you be confident in your music experimentation, or we want to give you the tools to experiment with music and make it always sound great. So like, that's the way that I would think about it is just like, if we play exactly what you said, just like one step further and look about how that changes people's lives to like have that, what does that dream outcome then look like? Well, um, uh, this is a selfish question that we're going to, uh, I'm going to ask. <laughs> we were going through this and this was um, something that we've been actually struggling with. We have a community. We've been trying out a bunch of different formats, different things. We have something called Doc's Help Desk. And what we're doing right now is it's a community where you can ask questions and uh, weekly AMAs and get real time feedback for your big idea. Mm -hmm. The one component that we're missing, and that's why we kind of positioned it more of a help desk than like a community. We get a lot of entrepreneurs and ones trying to get side hustles. They're like, great. Like, I just want to have the resources and tools. I don't want to talk to other people. Like, I don't have time for that. I'm just trying to, um, I'm just trying to do my own thing. Is that, should should there be a position of trying to convince them the value of community or give them what they want right there? What do you think? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and, and this is a funny thing because like I have run so many founder communities and the reason why I don't love running founder communities anymore is because they're so busy. Like it's so hard to like get them on a call and get them to like all hang out with each other and things like that. And I get it, right? Like, cause I'm living the lifestyle. Um, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, what I would, so, so I think founders, especially because they've been hit by so many community offerings are a little bit more jaded about that. Um, because there's accelerators, there's incubators, there's all of these different like styles of founder communities that exist. And so what I would probably reposition as is instead of saying like, Hey, there's going to be a lot of just like live asynchronous chats. I would either, I would probably focus on like events or something that gets them to feel more of the face-to-face -face interactions with other folks. Um, and so like when we actually started Heartbeats Customer Community, um, we were dealing with a lot of the same thing. Because most of the folks that we were working with were like running community businesses. They were the founder, the solo printer themselves. And so we said like, all right, you know, we don't have enough people in this community to have constant active conversation. Uh, and these people are already busy. And so like getting them to take the first step is going to be really hard. And so what we did is we said every two weeks, we are going to run a two hours, like office hours, uh, or, uh, sorry, uh, uh, an hour of um, just like live masterminding with other folks that are building communities. And so what that meant is it was a Zoom call. You would jump in, I would kind of facilitate and like get everyone excited. 
And then we would split into breakout rooms with like four people per breakout room. And the goal was just talk about the problems that you have or that you're facing with other experienced expert community builders that can help you solve these problems. And so that's what we sold. And that was a lot easier because now we weren't selling a community. We were selling, hey, get, expert, get ex, uh, access to experts that are also working through the same problems that you're working through. And as those conversations started to evolve naturally, then we saw that like, okay, the digital community uh, element of this is going to actually take off really well. We put them all in heartbeat, had them actually talk and chat with each other and all that. But for the first like two months of that, the heartbeat community itself was pretty dead. Um, and so what we did is instead we just focused on like, how do we get them to have some interactions with each other and then move into the community. And so what I would think about is actually like gating the community a little bit and thinking like, maybe you have to attend an event to be able to join the community. Maybe you have to like contribute in some way, connect with another member in some way, and then you get access to the community. Like if, if people are not valuing it, make it a premium piece. I love that. I yeah. love that. I'm going to write that down uh, for us to add that. I think that really makes sense. And then it allows them to, you know, self segment what they yeah. need and when they're doing that. Uh, yeah. Also to get saying uh, great, uh, great feedback, very much appreciated. So this is good. We're in yeah. the right direction. Yeah. And then Keto also mentioned, you know, like some folks just simply don't want community experiences and let's like, I, I think most people want community, but like I said, that that word community has been very watered down over the last few years, especially like after COVID and everybody and their mother was like making a digital community, it became harder because you just, there was so much noise that was out there. And so now I think we just have to be a little bit more thoughtful about the way we communicate what you actually get out of a community and what the value is that you actually receive. And that that translation is kind of some of the, the harder problems that we're dealing with in the community space. So we, we've talked about a lot of the pieces of building out this offering, figuring out what you care about, figuring out what you want to put together in the community. Let's talk about actually getting some customers, right? Because we got an offer. Let's go out and actually stress test it against the market. And so what I recommend is as you are going out and getting customers, you got to jump on calls with every single one of them. If you've been in your space for a little bit, if you have a little bit of expertise, you probably know uh, where to find folks that are interested in your community offering. And what I would do is I would just go in and say like, hey, I'm building this thing. I would love your feedback or I'd love to get some perspective. Can we jump on a call and talk about this? Jump in, talk about kind of what you're thinking and you'll be able to gauge pretty quickly if they're into it, if they're not into it. And if they're into it, just bring up the offer and say like, okay, cool. This is how I'm thinking about structuring it. This is the price point. Is this something that you would be game for? Uh, and then just ask the question and see if you can close on the call. And what I would just like keep in mind is that your close rates are gonna be pretty low at the beginning. like. I would say a max of 10% of your calls will actually convert and say yes. And that's okay. You just kind of need to work your way back. So if you need, uh, you know, 10 customers, then like it's a lot, but get on a hundred calls and you can do that in the course of a month. You can do that in the course of two months, but that's your first 10 customers. That's a thousand a month in revenue. If you're charging a hundred a month, right? Like that can be a pretty huge milestone. Um, so that's kind of what I would think about is like, get these folks on, on, you know, zoom calls on video calls, even just like phone calls, um, send them loom videos, like make things that feel really thoughtful and really personal. Um, when we were trying to get people into a heartbeats, uh, customer community at the start, uh, I would literally just tweet people a personalized loom video, uh, of myself talking about their community and talking about the hearth and our customer community and what we could offer them if they came through. Uh, and that actually had like a surprisingly high conversion rate. I think like when we would do that, we get like 80% of people respond back and be like, yeah, I'm interested, let's jump on a call. Um, and so we would do a lot of things like that that would get people really excited, but make it feel really personal, make it feel really thoughtful and try to jump on calls with folks find the true believers like don't don't stress yourself out with being like the best you know salesperson in the world find the people where it instantly clicks with them like they see it and they're like yep that's what i want like this matters to me and this is cool for me and fill up your pipeline with as many of those people as possible and just keep kind of thinking about the health of your pipeline this is like what a lot of folks struggle with as they're starting a business for the first time is your job is you have to constantly get new leads in the door at the starting point uh and so keep reaching out every week kind of just like set like hey i'm going to reach out to folks for an hour this week i'm going to post on reddit for an hour this week like these are the actions that i'm going to take to keep bringing more and more people uh, uh in the door and then, uh, yeah, ignore any of the individual knows, but at the end of each week, kind of just like look back and see the trends. What did people like? What did people not like? What things in your offering do you want to tweak and adjust based off of that? Uh, and then try to get people to actually pay for their first month up front. So I, I would say get the first month's rent up front. Um, like if you were going to charge 50 bucks a month for this community, get the first $50 for them and say like, hey, it's, it's a down payment. And if this doesn't work out, if there's problems, or if you just even don't like the community, 
then let me know and I'll hit one button on Stripe and I'll refund all your money, right? And again, that makes it one of these offers that it's impossible to say no to because it's like, wow, this is something I like. This is something I care about. This is going to make my life meaningfully better. And there's literally zero risk because if I don't like the community, I can get all of my money back. That's the way that you want your customers to be thinking as they're going through you know, the, the process of evaluating whether they want to pay you money for your community. And, and like I said, don't worry about being good at sales. Like it really, it doesn't matter yet. Uh, what matters right now is just the process of how you're continu continually iterating and improving what you are offering in your community. So do that and then give them a really magical experience. Give them the off menu items without asking, figure out what their pain points are, what their difficulties are, like give them anything that they need under the sun that's going to make their life better and help them reach their goal. Because what you are really trying to get here is you are trying to get testimonials that turn them into, uh, you know, the, the dream scenario that you can then go market and tell other people, look, I got member one, two, three, four, that all hit this dream scenario. And this is what it looked like. And by the way, this is a video from them walking through their experience of like hitting these goals that we set, for, set together. Um, so yeah, be there for their every beck and call. Like, don't worry about any scalable practices or things like that here. Just focus on delivering value over and over and over. Just focus on delivering a really great experience. Um, your, your goal here is to turn them into evangelists. If you do this right, then you won't have to do any of the marketing work to get your next batch of members. You'll just be able to get them from your first batch of members because they'll be zealots. They'll be evangelists. They'll be so excited about the experience that you built and crafted for them. And then as I, as I kind of mentioned in the earlier slide, like this is an iteration process. You're going to keep iterating and testing and trying out new things and seeing what works and what doesn't work. And this is really the thing that like most people don't do enough of. Like most people have an idea, they try the idea, some piece of it fails and they're like, yeah, this is not going to work. Uh, and the, the big secret is anything that you build, anything that you launch will not work the first time. There will be iteration, there will be improvements and tweaks and updates, and you just kind of have to stick in there. Um, one of the one of the big, uh, the best piece of advice that our investors actually gave us at Heartbeat is that there's really only one reason that a company falls apart, and it's because the founder stops working on the company, right? Like everything else is just like, you know, window dressing, like, oh, we didn't raise enough money, like we didn't, we ran out of money, we didn't have enough customers, like all this. All of that is just different iterations of the founder hit their limit and the founder had to give up. And like, I've, I've quit companies and I've given up on companies before too, right? Like I've shut down startups, uh, but like, that's, that's the real reason, right? So like the limiting factor here is how much do you want to iterate? And this is going to be probably the biggest determining factor of your success. Cool. So last couple slides that we'll, we'll run through um, is as you're going through this, just continue to get feedback from your members. Um, and I've listed it kind of in the order of importance. So with your first one to 100 customers, keep jumping on one on one calls with them. Uh, jump on Zoom calls as much as possible. Get insights, get information. Once you've passed 100 customers, then you can start doing a little bit more in terms of like surveys. And then once you've gotten past like 1000 customers, that's when you can start looking at usage data, logins, comments, engagement metrics, things like that. But really, at this point, all you need to focus on is just one on one calls, right? Like, let's do it the low lift way. Uh, don't over complicate it with all the tech and all of that stuff. Just focus on having real conversations with people and understanding what they like and what they don't like. Could I just add one thing to that? I love this, by the way. Again, screenshot this. This is amazing <laughs> because this allows you to, I think a lot of people are like, oh, I got to start send, sending out surveys and they only got like five people. Like yeah. <laughs> it, it's like, it's too much. Don't think about the automation and all this thing. But I would say too, I see a lot of times when people are getting started, getting on the phone call or just doing Zoom calls, they get so wrapped up of what they should ask. They're not actively listening or they get nervous and all these things. If possible, with consent, record the calls so you can review what they say later on. Because you might be so focused on what you're saying in the call, you really miss the underlining, like what they really need or what they're saying, and you just miss it in the call. So I really think if it's possible under, you know, before that 100 customers, record all of the calls because tons, you, it's gold. They're yeah. gold. They're telling you. It's all that information. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it, I've never had someone tell me, no, you can't record the Zoom call when I asked. Uh, and I have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of calls. Uh, the way I just phrase it is like, hey, can, can, can we record this? It'll just save my hand a little bit of writing. And most people are like, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, yeah. So yeah, don't, don't, don't worry about asking. Like I said, hundreds and hundreds, honestly, thousands at this point of calls. Never had someone actually tell me, no, you can't record this. Yeah. Um, cool. 
So uh, last thing is, yeah, think about speed uh, as your main focus right now. Like done is really better than perfect for right now. Like don't over index on like, is all the quality perfect? Is everything perfect? Like as long as you are delivering an immense amount of value to your customers, everything else will fit itself into place. And so this is what you really, really want to focus on. Um, the speed is going to help you also just understand and iterate and improve faster because the, the data that you get about what is working, it tends to compound. And so as you are working faster and faster, if you are doing twice as much work a day, at the end of a month, you're actually getting four times, five times as much work done because of how that information compounds and how much it allows you to work smarter rather than harder. Uh, and so this is probably the biggest thing is like, in, in my experience is the speed of iteration tends to be like the number one indicator of success for, for new businesses and for people, you know, spinning up new offerings here. No, this is great. No, someone is asking, by the way, uh, and I was talking about would love if we could get these slides. I don't know. We might have to put this under a paywall, but um, <laughs> uh, but no, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll be able to get it if that's OK with you. Yeah, um, we'll get it. We'll get it for you guys. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, I'll shoot this over to Doc. So, so you guys have it afterwards. Um, and then last pieces of this is just like, as you're thinking about scaling, just continue to keep building the, the better and higher ticket offerings that you have, like keep improving on the offerings, start off with just one and, and don't overcomplicate it. Start off with just one, build a really good experience around it, bring the customers in, iterate, improve, and then optimize that process of how you're actually fulfilling all these promises that you're making. This is just like all the, the tech and the tools that can make it easier on your life and then build new offerings or just improve on the existing offerings. And this is the cycle that you keep on running over and over and over again. And it seems really simple, but at each stage, you're going to learn new things about your members. You're going to learn new things about the way that they want to learn, the way that they want to interact and connect with the community. And that's going to allow your community to shift, evolve, and improve over time. And so, yeah, just some quick helpful scaling tips. This is another like easy uh, screenshotable slide is... Uh, early on, you can get organized with some easy, free and cheap tools. Uh, use like a CRM to just kind of gauge all the information about your customers, HubSpot. We're actually still on the free plan of HubSpot. Like we don't pay HubSpot any money. Um, MailerLite or MailChimp are really good automation, email automation tools. MailerLite, I think, is a little bit cheaper. Stripe for payments and then make a website and web, uh, Webflow or Squarespace, right? But like get the, the basics of it up that you need for a digital business. Um, once you've crossed the 5000 a month in revenue mark, uh, you can also hire on a VA to help you kind of optimize and grow this. This is another like pretty good little hack. Um, VAs, good VAs generally cost 500 to 700 a month for 40 hours a week full time. Uh, and these are like VAs in the Philippines. Like they speak perfect English. They're incredible. Uh, we uh, hired a VA on our, for our first time like a few years back. Uh, and it's just been awesome experience. Um, for like full-time folks uh, with like, you know, US-based salaries or, you know, EU-based salaries, like I would actually urge you not to hire too early. Start with freelancers and part-time folks first and then kind of work your way up into larger full-time positions just because like the people management side of this like takes a lot of time and energy and headache. And then the last scaling thoughts is like, you really need surprisingly little to get to 120K ARR. That's like the funny thing is like to get to 120K annual revenue, like you just need to be building a good offering it and selling it to people. And like, that's it. Like you don't need all the over optimization around your business. Just focus on your customers, your sales pipeline and your community offering. And that should be your North star. And that's, what's going to get you where you need to go. And that's really it. So, um, uh, we, uh, to, to talk a little bit about heartbeat and what kind of we can offer. Um, so this is, uh, the, the quick offering that we got for you guys today is if you just use heartbeat.chat slash doc, uh, and that's actually going to take you to docs, uh, referral link. Um, but it's going to give you 20% off your first three months of heartbeat. And, uh, we, we haven't announced this, this is coming out tomorrow, but we are going to be running a little bit special, uh, of anybody that like, uh, buys between, um, like now and like the end of cyber Monday, we're also going to do like one-on-one -on -one onboarding sessions with you to just like help make sure that you have everything that you need to get set up. Uh, so we're actually announcing that tomorrow. Uh, but I just want to give you guys a sneak peek because you guys jumped on the call live. Uh, and so the high level of heartbeat is we will take care of all the core features that you need for a community where you have your discussions, your courses, your documents, your events, all of that. So all of that is really nicely taken care of for you. But where we really shine is our payment suite, making it as easy as possible for you to monetize, build and scale and grow uh, a paid membership on heartbeat. So it's not just a community, but it's a profitable business that you can continue to run. And that's everything on my end. Uh, Doc, anything else? Oh, no, that was great. No, all that rapid fire, we didn't know. We're, we're saying in the chat, thank you so much for, for offering this. This is really good. And I, I just really want to say thank you so much for jumping on and having these calls with everyone at Heartbeat. 
this is going to really allow you to maximize your planning and really getting started like today. If I'm thinking about it at the end of the year, we only have a few more weeks until the new year. If you're thinking about having this plan, I love how uh, Martazo, you were talking about this isn't a get rich quick scheme. This is going to take hard work. But if you start now in a year from now, when we come back, you'll be able to talk about all the things that you had and all of these different things. Uh, Remember, we actually have a um, uh, we have a, a workshop in December that gets you ready for your business goals for the next year. So this pairs hand in hand with what we're going to be doing. We'll be announcing all that planning uh, actually during uh, uh, Cyber Monday. So this is going to be <laughs> good. Um, but all of those things. So no, people are saying great value. People are saying all of these things. We just, we really do thank you for for your time and energy. Um, just real quick, let's make sure... Um, Let's see, Urban Nerds is saying, does Heartbeat allow multi-tenancy? So where my subscribers, chapters will have the ability to onboard its chapters members. So almost like having like an admin for each tier and tenant like that, or would they need to purchase each chapter? Hope that makes sense. Yeah, they, that does. Uh, so great question. We, we do have the functionality to do that. We just don't call it multi-tenancy. Uh, we call it groups in Heartbeat. So you can create these groups and spaces. Uh, each of these groups will have their own channels, their own documents, their own events in the community. And you can create and set up those access permissions. And then what makes this really powerful is you can even like fully isolate these groups. So they only see the other members in their group. They don't see all of the other members that are in the community. Uh, So we can help you build and set that up. We've got quite a few communities that have built kind of a similar model, not exactly with like fraternity chapters, but like they've done it with like course creators where they'll have a course creator come in, they run their course, but their community is kind of its own separate pocket away from everything else. And then they have a management team that helps with all of the the folks on that heartbeat space. Uh, So the short answer is yes, you should be able to do that. You can do it with just like one heartbeat subscription. We don't want to make you pay extra. Um, and uh, yeah, we can we can help you set that up with that like one-on-one call. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So there's going to be a link down below. Remember, uh, take the time, look over these different steps. We're also going to have the slides available for you in a little bit. We'll put it in the chat down below and we'll pin the comment and everything like that. But remember, this is all about action. Don't just watch this video and be like, oh yeah, that'd be great. This is all about actionable things for you to build your very own profitable business, your a business community right now. So again, Thank you, uh, Martaza, for being here, for taking out uh, the time out of your day. And thank you, all of you, for taking the time watching and being here. That's wonderful. All right, everybody. Martaza, please stay on. We'll see all of you guys later. And uh, have a wonderful day, everybody. Sounds good. Take care, y'all. Thank you guys so much for joining. This was an absolute pleasure.